Hello and welcome to the first session on the topic of global development. This is the second topic found on paper two. Um, and to start us off, if you get onto the Jog Vlogs folder of 365, there is a video or you can follow this YouTube link or click or type it into YouTube just to give you a bit of a, an idea about the difference between some development factors. Um, so in this session, once you've watched that video, we're going to establish what we mean by development um, and start to really look at this topic as a basic introduction. So what I would say is just watch that film now and when you're ready, um, unpause the screen and then you can get the title written down and we'll crack on. Okay, so today, really, we're just going to get an introduction to global development, um, and I'm going to give you some different definitions of ways that we describe development globally, and also look at different factors that can affect or contribute to the human development of a country. So if you want to get this title and these uh, the learning objectives written down, um, then please feel free. If you again, we want to pause the screen to do that, and then I'm just going to start cracking on with the lesson. So... Um, the first thing is, there's an image here. Uh, I'd like you just to tell me, firstly, where in the world you think it might be um, and whether you think it's a, a developed or a less developed or developing or emerging world country. Okay, so looking at that image, does that think, do you think that's a developing or a developed country? Okay, the next one. Developing or developed country. And the next one. And the next one. Okay, so do these photos show developed or developing countries? Um, well, they show a bit of both, actually, um, and they show sort of a bit of difference between these different countries. Um, firstly, this one and this one are both from the same country. They're both in Kenya. Um, and actually, they're both around the same city. Um, this is the city of uh, Nairobi, I believe, uh, and this is on the outskirts of Nairobi. This is a slum called Kibera. So um, these two places are both in what we'd call a developing world country, um, despite the fact that this is a place where there's clearly, you know, development going on. There's skyscrapers, there's big buildings. It doesn't look like an impoverished nation um, because actually development is this thing that is not very even. Now, these two photos are both found in the United States. I believe they're Chicago, maybe. OK, so again, very much a developed nation. Um, that said, within the areas of Chicago, there is lots of, you know, less developed areas. Um, and therefore, maybe they're not shanty houses or slums, but they don't look pretty. They don't look very nice. You know, they're not particularly well looked after. There's graffiti on the wall. The windows and doors are boarded up. Um, it's, it's clearly falling apart, this house. So you can see development is a really important concept and we do have developing or emerging countries and developed countries but also within each country there is uneven levels of development not everywhere is as developed as everywhere else within a country so if I use the UK as an example we know that in the United Kingdom that parts of Norwich for example are extremely well developed you know they're, they're wealthy there's lots of um, prosperity whereas you look at maybe some of the parts of Glasgow where the old tenements were um, it's got some of the lowest life expectancies anywhere um, in the western world it's you know one of the it's, I think the average age for someone that lives in a certain part of Glasgow I can't remember the name of the area um, but their life expectancy is, is below 60 on average whereas the, the UK as a whole is about 80 81 um, so development is something which you can't just label a place developed or, or developing, and we kind of do as geographers, but just to be mindful that actually there are different scales of development and different levels across a country. So um, we're going to start to define development, and all of these definitions you need to get written down, please. So if I go too fast, remember, pause the screen. Um, first one is what is development in general? So development is a process where people, a place or a country changes for the better, making economic or social progress. That makes sense. If you think about you and your development, as you develop, you basically get better. You know, your education develops or your grades develop. They improve because your knowledge develops, for example. So it's about really change for the better. Um, and it's that process. It can be gradual. It can be quite fast. Um, but it's about essentially making a, a people, a place or a country change for the better. OK, so that is development in general. Make sure you've got that down. Now, the definitions that we have um, that we use in geography are developed. 
and they relate to countries that are generally wealthier, but that's not the only factor, so we're going to look at that in a minute. Um, so, developed, so for example, the UK, Japan, uh, the USA, Canada, France, Germany, um, you know, much of the um, kind of northern hemisphere really is classed as developed. Um, emerging countries or least developed countries um, are found in lots of uh, the continent of Africa. For example, lots of states in the continent of Africa are what we'd class as developing or emerging countries. Um, also countries that, you know, haven't got there yet. For example, if we look at Mexico City uh, in um, changing cities topic, that is an emerging or developing country. Uh, China is technically classed as emerging or developing. So, you know, it, it, there's various scales really of developed, developing or emerging. Um, and you just really need to be aware of um, the, the difference between developed and developing emerging. Okay, you'll only ever be asked about one developing or emerging country. So, um, now, when we measure economic development, money, jobs, try and think about some of the things that we could include within that measure. How would you look at a country's statistics and say, yep, they're economically developed? What sort of things would you look for? And again, I'm not expecting you to shout at the screen, um, just have a little think about it. Um, then, once you've thought about that, and I'll go through some answers in a second, how do you think we could measure social development? So things that aren't to do with money and jobs, everything else basically in a country. So things like schools, hospitals, access to healthcare, etc. How would you measure that? How would you put that into a stat? Okay, we're, we're going to discover that in, in um, a following lesson and, and you know parts of this lesson to come as well. Um, but when I say stat, I mean it can be an individual thing. So economic development might be um, what, what money on average do people get as a salary in the country? Because you can work that out. You can work out what everybody earns, divide it by the number of people that are earning and work out what the average salary is. Um, and that's something we call... Um, GNI per capita, it sounds a horrible term, but basically it just means what on average do people earn if you divide up the whole population and the, all the earnings that they make. Now it's not a great measure because some people make like over a million pounds and some people make five grand and if you had those two it would say on average that they earn about 500,000 pounds each which is obviously not the case. Um, so it's one measure of economic development. You could look at the percentage of people that are unemployed. That would be something that measures um, uh, economic development. If you've got a high number of people unemployed, you are likely to be less economically developed. So that's economic development measures. Social development measures are things, because they're to do with healthcare and hospitals or education, you could look at, for example, the number of doctors um, per 1,000 people in the population. That would be a good thing to measure. So if you've got a high number per 1,000, you've got less waiting times, you've got more access to healthcare, and if you've got a low number of doctors per 1,000 of the population, um, it means you've got less access to those things. Um, it might be your level of education, you know, and that could be measured by your uh, qualification level. You know, have you got what we call level four qualification or degree level qualification or higher? Or are you, um, or is a low number of your country at that level? What number of people in your country can read and write? Your literacy rate, as we look at it. So again, there are different stats that you can use to help you discover if a place is or isn't developed. Um, and we're going to play Top Trump's next lesson, um, if well, if you're in school anyway. Um, but Top Trump's um, with which to actually sort of measure some of these different things we call development indicators. But more on that later. So um, there are other things, again, we need to consider when we look at what we mean by development. So we've looked at economic and social development. Um, Economic development, as a, as a definition, is a me measure of a country's wealth and of how it makes its wealth. So, um, the firstly, how much money it kind of produces, it generates, but also what industry that links to. So, for example, um, banking is far more economically developed than agriculture, because if you have a bad harvest, then all of a sudden, even if you know you had a good year, the following year it's rubbish, um, and that can affect your wealth massively. So that's what we mean by economic development, a country's wealth and how it makes its money as well. So the UK has got a very big banking sector, um, and also we're, we're relatively wealthy, you know, income-wise. Um, so we are considered far more economically developed than countries that rely on agriculture for their main source of industry. Um, social, sometimes called human development. Um, is how um, we measure people's access to certain things like 
jobs. You know, I know jobs is a, an economic factor, but their access to jobs through things like education or, or job centres, um, the knowledge and education they've received, how healthy they are, their level of nutrition. You know, do they have access to a lot of calories? You know, which can help you know support them um, live healthy lifestyles, etc. Um, do they have access to leisure facilities? Are they safe? Uh, and those are all what we call human development factors. So it's no good if you're a country that's really wealthy, but um, no one can read and write because actually you, you need to balance that level of development up across the two factors. Now you can also get things that um, will affect development in, in with regards to politics, culture and social freedoms. So um, for example, the right to vote is considered um, something that you would find in a developed country. There are several countries in the world where that is not a, a basic human right. So, for example, the people of Syria, who are ruled currently at the moment, when I, at the time of recording anyway, by al-Assad, um, he is an autocrat. What he says goes. People don't have the right to vote him out. They've tried, you know, by protesting, but they've said you know, he said no and, and sent his army and, you know, put chemical weapons uh, to the to the population and things like that. So, you know, political, cultural, social freedoms are also another big factor. So measuring development is a difficult thing to do and it's hard just to say to a place you're developed and you're not developed and we, we kind of do it within a certain time frame or a certain kind of span of data. So you've got to look at money, health, education, political freedoms, cultural freedoms, um, all of those things rolled in together to really determine how developed a country is and again we will look at that more in detail because we're going to look at this thing called HDI okay so anyway moving on so we're now kind of looking back at certain things that we would have encountered during the changing cities topic which is this idea of quality of life so I want you to in a, in a mind map format such as this okay try and put these bullet points into one of those four categories so if you think that water supply is uh, an economic factor that affects quality of life, then you put it there. I mean, it's not, um, but essentially try and put each of these bullet points somewhere you think they belong. So economic would be something to do with money or jobs. Um, social would be to do with things like um, access to education, healthcare, etc. Physical would be to do with natural factors that you you know that occur in where you live can't change, and psychological are to do with you know your mental well-being. All right, so um, pause the screen, try and put those bullet points like I say in the right places, and I will reveal the answers when you're ready and unpause the screen. Okay, so here's the order. Um, economic factors from that list were income and job security. Um, you could even add to that the type of job you have. Again, is it in a uh, high level industry? Is it in banking? Is it in retail? Is it in tertiary sector? Or is it in sort of agricultural or low skilled sectors? Um, social factors, family and friends, education and health. Um, so those are factors that we'd put into the social um, quality of life kind of category. Psychological, um, your happiness and well-being, your freedom and your security. Again, it's all about how you think. So do you feel free? Do you feel free that you can have freedom of speech? Um, do you feel happy? Do you feel like your well-being is good? Do you feel secure? Um, all of those things are very much psychologically dependent. Um, and physical factors are, you know, your diet and nutrition, which again, you could put into the social side of things. Um, but physically, do you have enough? Can you grow enough food is what that's ref referring to. Um, water supply. Do you have adequate water supply? Is your climate good? Um, and do you have lots of natural hazards? Um, the key thing is here, all of these things can affect your quality of life both ways. If you have lots of natural hazards where you live, it will negatively affect your quality of life potentially. Um, if your income is low, it will negatively affect your quality of life. So just be aware of factors that can affect quality of life, okay, and be aware of how they can affect it for the better or for the worse. Okay, moving on. So, um, a bit of an exam question practice for you here. Uh, try and distinguish between quality of life, so the factors we looked at last time, and something called standard of living. See if you can have a go. This is a, a, an exam question that could easily crop up because these terms are often confused. So what is the difference between your quality of life and your standard of living? Okay, so pause the screen, attempt this, 
Um, it's worth two marks. It's described, so I don't want reasons. It's described, so it's trying to tell me how these two things are different from each other. Okay, I'm going to reveal some answers, so if you haven't answered it yet, pause the screen now. Um, the term standard of living is often used to describe our ability to get material wealth, leisure facilities. So things like um, being able to go to the gym. We don't need to go to the gym, but if we can afford a gym membership, then it improves our standard of living. Um, we don't need TV, but if we can afford a 40-inch plasma or whatever going on now, 4K, 5K, 7K TV, then it improves our standard of living. Our quality of life is used to describe more basic needs. Do we have access to health? Do we have access to education? Do we have access to adequate nutrition? Okay. Um, standard of living would be, can we have, can we afford like expensive Marks and Spencer's food? Whereas quality of life is, can we afford food full stop? Okay, so there's the difference between the two. It's really hard to get a definition down on paper, and that's why I've presented you with one here, which is pretty much a dictionary definition. It's a bit wordy, but I'm hoping you know the difference between quality of life is really our ability to get the essentials um, and, and think things that can affect our quality of life are generally our access to the essentials. And standard of living means, you know, can we get the essentials, but as well as possible. So can we get them and some? Okay. Right, again, get that down if you didn't get a very good definition or a very good um, answer, uh, and then we'll crack on. So factors that can affect development, okay? Now, again, this is a bit of a mind map. We're just getting all these terms, these introduction bits done. I know it's a bit of a, a dull lesson, but there we go. It is what it is. Um, Categorising stuff in geography is really important too because exam questions might just specifically ask for one thing. They might just say, technological factors or cultural factors so if you can't categorize these ideas or know what each kind of category means then you, you're at risk of maybe not getting the answer right so these images um, and some of them are a bit easier than others to understand these are all things that could be classified or clues sorry um, that could go into things that can affect development so these are all factors that can affect how a place develops or whether it develops well so for example Okay, let's take a nice easy one, all right? The wealth of a place. If a place is more wealthy, okay, it's more able to develop because it can spend that money on education, healthcare, um, all the things that help a country develop. So that would be an economic factor because it's to do with money. So I would put economic factors, um, level of wealth or um, amount of money that the country brings in or GDP, okay, something along those lines. So what I'd like you to do is consider what some of these other images may mean and try and fill in this table, okay, because that's all you're producing, this table, um, try and fill that in as well as you can. Remember, try and link it to how it could affect development. So if it's not something that could affect development, if don't just say, oh, seesaws, okay, because that's clearly a, a seesaw, but what does it mean? Um, how does that affect development um, or makes people happy because they go to the park? I mean, that's a silly answer. You're not a silly, you know, year group. So, um, Try and if you're not sure what it means, just hold on and I'll give you some information. But try and do as many as you can and slot them into these four different categories. Factors that affect development, economic ones, social ones, technological ones and cultural ones. OK, pause the screen now while you do that. And then when you're ready, you can unpause. OK, right. So here are some of the answers. Um, economic factors can include wealth or your income. Uh, trade, so how well you can um, uh, you know, sell goods and buy goods in from other countries, and your level of unemployment. So um, they are very firmly uh, over here. Unemployment, trade, and wealth. Social factors um, can be your health, which is what this refers to. Okay, that's like a DNA strand, that's heart rate, that's pills, access to medicine, doctors, etc. So health, um, education. These represent all the subjects. So uh, computer science, geography, PE. Uh, science, physics, something, um, biology, maybe English, blah 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 blah. Okay, um, so uh, access to education, and this represents equality. That's a social factor. Women being equal to men. Now we know that even in the UK, there's a lot of inequality just by the gender pay gap. Um, so that's another factor. Um, cultural factors. Oh, sorry, we'll go to technological first. Um, electrification 
or access to electricity massively important to develop if you can't you know uh, use lights at night or you can't uh, heat home or boil a kettle or all those things then you will struggle to develop as well so if you've got widespread electrification it might help um, access to the internet um, is another factor you know do you have access to Wi-Fi I know rural reefermites might have really poor Wi-Fi but you've still got some okay um, and improvements in industry is a bit of a vague one which we haven't got a picture for and then lastly cultural factors um, well-being your general well-being um, how, you know how well do you feel in yourself that's what this thing represents okay um, your your level of kind of exercise and health and, and physical well-being mental well-being um, democratization okay again horrible word but what it really means is do you live in a democracy? Do you have the right to vote? Do you have freedom of voting? And then lastly, work-life balance. That's really another key aspect. You know, do you spend all your time in the office, away from your family? Does it affect, again, your mental well-being, really? So there you go, cultural factors as well. Um, so make sure you've got that copy complete, um, and then we'll carry on with the lesson. So um, the final task, really, this session is to um, complete this handout which is on 365 uh, and available to you there's also a video there which will help you um, but really what I want you to do is get a summary really of how um, food and water security are really massively important when it comes to affecting the level of development of a place so these are all things that aren't necessarily to do with wealth you know we're, we're going to get on to more uh, wealth related factors in later lessons this is really do you have the basic needs of food and water uh, and, and the effect that will have on your development if you don't okay so um, the slides that follow have got all the information you need to use to complete this sheet but you may also need to use a bit of your own knowledge to maybe add some details okay so um, I'm going to go on to the next slide hopefully you've got this make sure you print this out or you've got it you can electronically add to it um, and look at the sections okay that follow um, so the first one is about food security um, and you don't necessarily have access to the Highland Cow textbook to help you here um, but what I would like you to try and do really is, is try and explain why so get these stats down about the UN in your in the relevant box but uh, try and explain why um, the three factors there availability access and consumption can um, be factors or try and explain what those factors mean with regards to food security okay if you're struggling email me okay and I will then um, provide you with a bit of a summary um, but if next time you're in you get a chance to get hold of the Highland Cow textbook ignore that bell sorry um, then um, it will help make sure that you've got um, full sentences and a good complete set of notes okay so use the uh, this slide here pause the screen um, and then add any extras if you've got access to page 199 of the Highland Cow textbook or the interweb Okay, and also, you know, you've got maps there that I want you to try and describe a little bit too. Right, um, the next one is about um, water security, and the video link that you can see there is actually saved on 365. So you can use that video link, click on that video link that's been saved for you. Um, also, again, page 199 of the Highland Cow textbook is really handy for this. Um, but what, again, what I'd like you to do is use this and that video. Um, to try and just identify some of the, the issues around water security, what it is um, and how it can be affected um, and also the, some of the consequences that might be um, resulting from it. So again, pause the screen, email me if you want a bit of a summary because you haven't got access to the textbook um, and I'll send you either a page of it or I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a summary. Um, but pause the screen when you're ready, um, you can unpause it. And the final part of the um, handout really is to try and look at how food and water security can affect development so um, again I'm going to just put all of the detail that you need on the screen here and what I would really like you to do is just get down quite a few of those stats to really kind of um, hammer home just how how much impact lack of food and lack of water security can affect a place's development try and link it to their development though okay all right, so again, you can pause the screen while you complete that. If you've got any gaps left over, again, that's fine. You can always just email me, not a problem. Um, and once you get access to the Highland Cow textbook, page 199 will really, really help you going forward. All right, so that pretty much summarizes this session. Um, so well done. We've done a lot of definitions work, a lot of copying down, really setting the, the, the you know, the... Um, the, the scaffolding putting in place for looking further into what we mean by development, how we measure development. Uh, and you're also going to do a big case study in this topic. You're going to be looking at the um, uh, the, ca the case study of India 
and how India is developing rapidly over time and some of the, the factors that have affected that and the, the good and the bad about that. Okay, well, thank you for listening. Well done for getting through it. Um, and I'll see you next time.